I'm rock fishing some great water at Dolphin Point. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In today's video, I've come down to a spot that I fished recently and just got absolutely slammed every cast. And the conditions are pretty good. It's not early in the morning, but I'm still confident of catching some quality fish. So it'll be really interesting to see at 8 a.m., once the sun's risen, how good the fishing is. So make sure that you like and subscribe and please hit the notification bell. So that really helps me and let's get into it. I'm casting into the sun. I'm looking straight into the sun just now when I'm casting. Um, it's that time of the year now, the sun, although it's pretty low in the sky anyway. Now I'm very expectant. I'm putting in a reasonable cast. How long is it going to take for me to get a bite? That'll be interesting to see. Just see ya. I'm going to time it. <laughs> it's five past eight. We'll see how long it takes to get a bite. I'm using half pilchards but I've got the heads of the pilchards in my pouch and I'm just going to squash them a bit and toss them in for a bit of burley. I could use the heads for bait as well, but I prefer casting the tails. Anyway, so I'm just going to chuck a couple of bits in. Now where I've landed is I'm on, a, I'm on a sand bottom near reef, which is always really good. Because you get the species that like to hang on the sand, and then you get other species that come off the reef and onto the sand. They kind of do a bit of a, you know, they, especially like snapper who uh, live on the reef a lot of the time, and they'll come off the reef onto the sandy patches. Now the water is starting to clear up a little bit, because we had really, really big waves five or six days ago. Day, days ago. But um, it's now just clearing up a bit. It will be good to fish down here for other species, actually. I'd like to come back to this spot and fish for different things. So I'm going to make a few other videos on fishing for different species. And I think this is a good place to do it. So the baits that I'm using this morning are, once again, I'm using, I've actually got two different baits on at once. I've got pilchard and squid that I caught a while ago. It's good to have a couple of different baits. Gives me an option if I get a bite and miss it. I know I've still got some bait there. At least now with the ocean calmed down a bit, it's a bit more relaxing. There's no waves, not many waves washing around. It's very safe. Now, if you are an experienced rock fisherman, you obviously understand the aspects of rock fishing, but if you are new to rock fishing, or you're someone that is thinking that you'd like to go rock fishing, safety is very important. There's actually a whole lot of aspects to it. I mean, as a starter, if you can't swim, I don't know that rock fishing is for you or your rock fishing opportunities are very limited if you can't swim. Why would you put yourself in a situation where if for some reason you got washed into the water, you couldn't swim? That wouldn't be very good. So actually there's a lot of details about rock fishing safety. I've been fishing off the rocks for about 45 years. I, it's a real passion of mine. So I am going to be making a video on rock fishing safety and sharing all of my experience and wisdom from my many years of rock fishing. So that's something will be, which will be coming up. Can you please put in the comments um, anything about rock fishing that you'd like to know? Uh, anything around rock fishing safety, uh, rock fishing videos that you may like me to make? If you can whack that in the comments, that'd be awesome. That'd be really good. So my line's been in the water for three minutes. I haven't had a bite yet. What I'm going to do, it's a bit of a patience thing, waiting for the fish to come around. But what I'm going to do is, further to my right, the sand disappears and it becomes mainly reef. 
depending on what happens here, I may move to the right a bit and cast my line a bit closer to the reef or maybe even on the reef. The challenge with that is, is I risk getting snagged. So that's one of those things that you've got to do. So I'm actually going to cast in a couple of different spots while I'm here to see if that makes a difference in locating the fish. Still, when you're fishing in a place like this, you're always a really good chance of catching something excellent. That's why I'm here, because you know, you could catch a really good fish, regardless of the time of day, really. Where's my line? I can't see it. Oh, darn it. Would you believe? I had a fish on. I've still got the fish on. But one of my hooks is caught on the rocks. Darn it. I was a bit relaxed and not realizing how deep it is here, I probably needed to be a little bit tougher on that fish. I can feel it right now, the fish, it actually feels to me like a snapper. But I'm probably gonna actually have to break my line off. Because I've got a two, isn't that weird? <laughs> isn't that weird? I've actually got a fish on. Because I've got a two hook rig, I'm stuck to the bottom with one of my rigs and I've got the other, I can feel the fish going like that at the same time. Oh man. Oh well, I don't think I can get it off. Well that's, uh, that's one lesson I've learned this morning. So I'm just gonna have to try and break this off. So um, that fish got away and all I've got left is a swivel. <laughs> but thankfully this morning, I made up some rigs before I came down here. I also thawed out all my bait. So I've only got one knot to tie and I've got another rig on and I'm back in there. So first cast, first cast I had a fish on after about four minutes. Seemed like a long time <laughs> when I was waiting for a bite. But, um, and so I need to make an adjustment. When I was winding that fish in, I was just cruising, hang on, I'm getting a bite pretty quickly now. Well, I just had the beginnings of a bite then. That was much faster this time feels like it feels like tra trevally bites I'm just waiting for a decent take to try and set the hook so anyway I was saying that the tides relatively low and I was a bit relaxed before not really concentrating on the rocks my rock fishing I haven't done much rock fishing of late so I just need to fine-tune that but the adjustment that I need to make is that when I get a fish on, I need to keep it near the surface and keep it away from the rocks near the shore. I've got a fish. Okay, so this time I don't want to give him any room near the edge. Got to wind him in pretty quickly, actually. What's the story? So oh, it's a nice trevally. Beautiful. Look at that guy. Over in WA they call these skippy. I believe so. <laughs> so really, um, I've only been here for a few minutes. It's 
gentleman's hours after 8 a.m. in the morning, but I'm getting bites. So that's good. Look at this guy. He's also been cooked by the stinger as well. And he took the pilchard bait. I've got a pilchard on the bottom, and you can see I've got a squid bait, although my bait's half off the hook. So I've got a pilchard bait on the bottom and a squid bait on the top. I didn't half hitch the squid, that's why I reckon it's um, slipped down. Anyway, I'm going to take this guy in because I'm going to keep him. I was much quicker getting a bite then than before, actually. I was only in the water last time for literally 30 seconds. Oh, same thing, getting, a, getting another bite now. It's actually taking, bringing the line towards me a little bit. I just need to walk back a bit so that I can get a decent strike in. I'm just going to strike. Yeah, got it. Oh, hang on, feels a little bit bigger. Well, it did initially anyway. Have I got a salmon this time? I don't know what I've got. Actually, this one's another salmon. I don't mind though. So, so far I've hooked three casts, three hookups in a relatively short period of time. Alrighty, I'll quickly sort this guy out and we'll be casting our line out again. Just before I throw my line out again, I'll show you what gear I'm using. This reel that I have is a 14,000, 14,000 size reel. So it's one of my big, big spinning reels. You can see, you know, it's a big spinning reel. It says 14,000 there. I have it spooled with 15 kilo line. The reason I'm using 15 kilo line is because often you hook some big fish here and if you have less than that you're undergunned. So I've got this spool with 15 kilo line. This rod is 12 feet long. This is the rod that I've used in nearly all of my beach fishing videos of late. Uh, when I put a larger bait on off the beach I use this reel and this rod. I've been doing that. so. Um, I've had three casts and three hookups. Can't really complain about that at this beautiful time of the morning. I'm using a squid bait on my top hook. You can see my top hook coming up. I've got a short leader. And then down the bottom here, still a relatively short leader with a half pilchard and two hooks in it. I've got my main hook and a stinger hook in the half pilchard. So far my three bites have all been on the pilchard. But I'm still hoping that while I'm spending a bit of time here, something bigger is going to jump on. Man, well, I'm not even getting time to do anything. Oh, yeah, I've got a fish. I think it'll be another salmon, actually.
This one has completely swallowed my squid bait. You'll notice a moment ago I showed you the squid bait. You can't see, you can't see it at all. It's hidden within that fish. Still got the pilchard on the bottom. So I still have my, my bottom bait, but I barely had time to click my bail arm over then and I was hooked into another salmon. So I think what I'm going to do with my next cast, I'm going to cast it a bit further onto the reef, not, you know, hoping that I can get a different species because I think I was on the sand then. I landed on the sand, so obviously the salmon are in this kind of sandy bay. So I'm going to try and just get a bit closer to the rocks and see if that makes a difference. I've cast a bit further out near the reef. I've moved along a little bit further out to sea. I'm already getting bites. Trevally bites. Yep. I'm just whining fast because, um, so I expect this to be a trevally. Hang on, it's gotten off. <clears throat> yep. You can see that they've attacked both my squid bait. See, it's half eaten. And I've got no pilchard left at all. But I had a fish on then and I could tell it was a trevally. But man, it didn't take long to get a bite. You know, it's, ama it's amazing that even, even the scent of these pilchards, I ha I'm, I'm only burly just a little bit, it wouldn't be getting out where I'm casting, but man, the few fish out there. Hang on, I'm get, it hasn't even hardly sunk to the bottom, I'm getting hit. I cast out a little bit further to the right then. Yeah, I'm on again. Wow. This is six casts, six hookups. Swimming on a bit of an angle towards the rocks. So I'm going to have to wind quickly to try and keep him away. Uh, that was another salmon. I cast in a different spot but still hooked a salmon. Gonna quickly come back. It's the last time I got a bite as soon as it hit the water. Let's see how long it takes this time. I would just like the chance for some other fish to grab the bait before the salmon get it. It's not fair. The salmon keep coming in and stealing the bait. Yeah, I'm getting a nibble now. I'm getting a bite, I'm just feeling and waiting. I can feel these knocks on my line. Which feel like Trevally. But maybe while they're creating a bit of a, a ruckus out there, something big will sweep in and take the squid. Ah. I know they're Trevally, <clears throat> and 
and I'm in the midst of all the small bites. I'm trying to wait for them to actually feel that they've picked it up in their mouth and I've, let's see, I've got him this time <clears throat> and that they're running away with it. Okay, he's pulling a little bit, this guy, interestingly. Yeah, he's got a little bit of grunt to him. And get down a bit closer to make it a little bit easier to land whatever this is. It feels heavier than a trevally. I don't know what it is. It's, I don't think it's a salmon because it's not jumping. Hey! That's what we want. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. Woo -hoo -hoo. That is what we want. Now that is a beautiful snapper. A cracking, a cracking fish, not a massive snapper, but a fantastic eating size fish. I'd estimate him to be about 10, 20, 30. He's probably about 35, 36 centimeters. But I definitely felt the extra weight of him fighting. So here you go, what time is it? It's 10 to 9 in the morning, the sun's well and truly up. Just having a pleasant fish off the rock shelf and you can still catch fish like this. That's pretty awesome. Can you see what's on my bottom hook? I've jagged a sweep. So it's interesting. That gives me a bit of uh, encouragement for the next few casts. It'd be good to get a couple, one, a couple more of these or maybe even a bigger one. Would be fantastic. How good's that? Look at this guy, he's a beautiful fish. Just a stunning Australian fish. Let's see what happens this time. That was encouraging to get that nice snapper before. So I'm happy about that. I hope there's a few more out there. Ooh. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, yep. Feels pretty decent. Could be another snapper. I want to get it up higher in the water column because I don't want to risk getting caught on the rocks down here. I don't know, it's... No, it's not a snapper. Oh, sugar. Sugar. I'm going to have to lift these straight up. Oh, how am I going to do this? Fair dinkum. That's why 30 pound line comes in handy. I was actually a able to lock deadlift them out of the water. I'm a bit puffed. <laughs> All right. Two more salmon. Fantastic. Oops. Back away from the edge. I'd like to be able to at least wind my line over before I get a bite. I get to have a little rest. Hang on, no.
Oh man. Well, it's another salmon. My bottom pilcher bait's gone, and he's taken the squid bait at the top. <sighs> and um, I was casting further out to sea then, but still got the same result. So I'm gonna keep trying to cast more onto the rocks in hope of getting another snapper. So I just gotta look after this guy. See, so you couldn't walk down here the other day. You wouldn't be able to fish with two rods when you're getting this many bites. You don't need two rods. But quite often I fish with two rods off the rocks. I have a set, I have one set when I'm fishing for snapper and I hold one. Now undoubtedly I would catch more snapper today if the uh, salmon were not stealing the bait before they could get it. I have no doubt if the salmon were not here I'd catch more snapper. I haven't had a bite straight away this time, so that's probably good in one way. And I'm not sure if I've landed on rock or sand, possibly rock. So just in case, hang on, I'm getting a bite. Just in case I've landed on rock or reef, I'm not going to pull my line at all or drag it across the reef because I might get hooked up. I'm just going to let it sit where it landed and wait for a bite. Yeah, I'm getting some little trevally bites. I'm waiting for a nice big whack. Don't really want, I'd prefer a snapper to a trevally or a salmon. But they won't get that squid bait off easily. When I'm standing here waiting for a bite, I can feel fish tapping at it, some relatively soft bites. I know they're probably trevally, but I don't actually lean into it or try to set the hook until I actually feel a solid pull on the line. When I feel a solid pull and they take the line, I'm confident that the hook is in the fish's mouth, and then I lean into it. I put a bit of effort into the strike because there's a bit of um, monofilament has a bit of stretch in it and there's a little bit of um, a bow in the line and I have to make up for any potential slack that's in the line in order to set the hook. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just waiting till I get a, a suitable bite that pulls it hard enough and then I'll see if I can hook it. I'm thinking at the moment that my pilchard's probably gone. No, see, that was not a good enough bite. I'm leaving it there because I'm just banking on the fact that the squid might still be on the hook. So if I don't get another bite within, within a minute, I'll wind it in and probably rebait. And I think I'll cast it out in that zone again because I haven't had any salmon bites. Now I'm going to wind my line in and check the bait. But when I wind it in, I'm not going to just, just start winding. Because I, where I'm in an area of mixed reef and sand, if I just start winding it at a low trajectory across the bottom, I'm very likely to hook onto the bottom and get snagged. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind my rod tip down low, pull the line up quickly to get it off the bottom, and then wind fast to keep it up off the rocks. I want to get my hooks and everything up near the surface so that I don't get hooked up. And now my sinker is skipping across the surface, which is great. There we go. Oops. So my squid bait still looks good. So potentially I could have kept holding on to it because this bait's still viable. And it could have sat there waiting for a snapper. But the, um, the pilchard bait on the bottom is gone, as you can see. So that's what the Trevally were having a nibble at. Can be a bit fiddly sometimes. Just gonna get that through the scales. Pin that through there and get my other hook. My top hook. It's this small hook that helps me catch some of those other fish which are just nibbling on the line. All right, we're good to go again. I'm going to wander out a little bit closer to the water's edge. Right out on this rock. Because it's a beautiful day today. Relatively calm. Really pleasant conditions for fishing off the rocks. Just a hop, skip and a jump. Up here away from the water's edge. Not that I need to do that today, I'm just doing it because the sun's really shining. And it makes it difficult to film. Hang on. Getting a bite. Well, got one. Got a little bit of pull in it. Wow. If it's not a salmon, it'll be something a bit better. Well, that's swimming into the shore, which is what salmon tend to do. Yeah. I'm guiding him along to the left. I've actually got to get him up on the rocks just here. Okay, so what's going on here? This looks weird. My hooks look a little bit tangled up and I think the salmon's caught on the, um, the keeper hook, the, the stinger. I can see the swivel in the salmon's mouth. What's going on there? It's going to, um, that's strange. Bit of a strange setup, that one. Right. This salmon's suffering a little bit because I would have let him go. I've got enough salmon. But I think because the, um, the stinger hook, it's not really the big hook that's got him. The stinger hook is right down his throat. All right, let's just deal with it <laughs> and have another cast. I've decided to change tack a little bit because I tend to be getting the fish salmon while I'm catching them on squid the pilchard bait gets taken really easily so I'm actually doing two squid baits now because the squid's much tougher and it'll stay on if I get a few nibbles and it gives it a chance for a snapper to come and take it so I'm just going on to two squid baits which I'm going to whack out and then I'm going to explain to, explain to you a little bit about why I chose this spot
I think that's a good cast. It's right in the area where I'd like to be. Okay, so I've cast out actually over some reef, which is about 30, 40 metres out. I've cast past that onto a sandy patch beyond it, which is pretty good. If I go too much further to the right, there's no sand at all. And then it's a different style of fishing. Now the reason I've chosen this spot, it's typical of just about every headland around Australia, up and down the coast. I like to fish areas where there's plenty of reef, but a bit of sand. And whenever you go down to a rocky headland, when you're up on the headland, you can look in the water and you can see where the rock is and where the sand is on the bottom because the water where the rock bottom is, it's dark. There's dark patches. And then when you have sand, you can see it's like more of a lighter green patch. So you can tell the difference between where there's rock and sand. But those areas are great to fish because you get a multiple, you get a variety of species fishing in places like that where you've got both reef and sand and you're fishing. I want to fish close to the reef but not necessarily right on it when I'm casting like this. And I give myself the opportunity to catch a few different things. You could catch kingfish here, you could catch mulloway here, all sorts of um, different species. Now I haven't had a bite yet, which I'm happy about. Because I'm happy for it to sit there and wait for a bigger fish to come along and find it before the other ones do. Hopefully. Now I'm getting a bite now though. It's coming towards me. I'm going to walk back. It's swimming towards me. Man, it's still swimming. It actually must be on. Because it was swimming towards me. Okay, here we go again. Let's see what it is. <laughs> the salmon tend to swim on an angle sideways and they often come right up against the rocks. This, this fish has done the same thing. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's actually in that little rock pool. Hard to see because it's, um, when you see it from above, well, let me see, can I see it? Yeah, there it is. See the trevally in there? See that trevally swimming around the rock pool? He's kind of semi back at home. When a wave comes, he'll be able to get free. All right, time to cast out again. I'm putting in a pretty solid cast here. It's not my biggest cast, but it's probably around 70 meters maybe. I recently caught some salmon on another rock fishing in the other video I made. They've already been made into fish cakes. <laughs> and I gave half a dozen fish cakes to my neighbor. They haven't had the Thai fish cakes with the salmon before. They actually really like eating the salmon when I give it to them, just the fillets. I don't know how they cook it, but, but they really love it. In fact, my neighbour, he didn't like fish, wouldn't eat fish. I gave him some Australian salmon. I made sure that I bled it and removed the bloodline, gave it to them. Now he's hooked on Australian salmon and he didn't like fish. There you go. So um, I've kept a few salmon today. I don't know how many I've got in the bucket, probably half a dozen or so. But I'm actually going to make another batch of Thai fish cakes with them. And I really should film it because I've had lots of people asking me for the recipe for the Thai fish cakes. And I will film it um, really soon. <laughs> so that you can uh, enjoy that as well when you're catching salmon or whatever. Okay, so I haven't had a bite. In the, con in the context of today, I'm happy to not get a bite. I'm happy to just let it sit there. Now what time is it now? 9.35. So I've been fishing for approximately an hour and a half 
from 8 o'clock to 9.35. And I got heaps of fish. A nice snapper. I've kept it one snapper and a trevally and the rest are salmon. And I'll probably, hopefully get another snapper now. Now that I'm not getting harassed by the other fish. I can catch my breath. I've been up and down, up and down, up and down the rocks. Really busy. It was a hard whack. That was not a trevally bite or a salmon bite. That was definitely a snapper bite then. I had one really hard whack. So why isn't he picking it up and do it going on with the job? Come on. I've been getting these little soft touches from Trevally, but then I had a really hard, sharp whack, and that's how snapper bite. Very often they just whack it, pick it up, and take off with it. Yep, I'm on. Well, I don't know what it is at this point. It's probably not likely to be a salmon. Oh, I've got to get it over these rocks. I just could feel it dragging on the bottom then. It's a bit of weight in it. It surprises me a little bit. Because I was getting softer bites, I did have a decent whack. There are a couple of head knocks with it, which is what snapper do. It's quite heavy. Where is it? I'm just going to lift it up. Oh, uh, yep, it's another snapper. Beautiful. Whew. It paid off putting the two squid baits on and removing the pilchard because I was able to leave it sit there longer and some of the small fish that were pecking at it, I knew they wouldn't get the squid off in a hurry, so it's resulted in another nice eating size snapper. So that's two snapper now for the morning. That's great. Pretty happy with that. He's taken the bottom hook. In fact, both the, the stinger and the main hook are both down within him somewhere. So how's that? A sleep in and then a fish and you can still catch fish like this well and truly after the sun's up. It's pretty good. Awesome. I've had to break this in Snapper's neck because he swallowed both of the hooks. But you can see, look, that squid bait with two hooks is right down, right down his, going, starting to go down his gullet. You can see how he swallowed it right down his guts, virtually. Both hooks. So there you go, I've had a great session this morning, literally I bite every cast. I've got quite a few fish. Got two beautiful snapper, fantastic eating fish. So it's great to catch them. So if you've learned anything in this video, please make sure that you comment. I really appreciate it. And I do read the comments. Make sure that you like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It helps me to get it up there in YouTube and then more people can enjoy these videos. So appreciate it very much. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.